Welcome to Shift Online. With tomorrow being Memorial Day, we want to start today off with a tribute. In every generation, they stand. In every generation, they serve. In every generation, they sacrifice. For two and a half centuries, on land, sea, and in the air, they fought and died for an idea bigger than themselves. They are the Americans of every race and faith who swear a sacred oath of honor and live it to the last. And when that moment comes, they lay down their lives for the country they love, protecting their comrades, their families, and their nation. They are the bold angels now. Examples to us all. On this day, let us honor their sacrifice and call upon ourselves to walk in their footsteps boldly. For they have led the way to the America we must be. If today is your first time with us, you can scan this QR code. And if you fill out the Connect card, we'll send you some free Opus coffee. Next week is our next all church meeting. We do these a few times every year just to keep you guys updated on all the behind the scenes stuff, including full transparency with all funds. And we want to go above and beyond because, you know, churches kind of suck at that. So if you haven't heard, we started a podcast. It's called Shift Happens and it is on all platforms. The podcasts are all about those who have been marginalized by the church and how they have come to find peace and healing. The first episode is on June 7th, which is also when Taylor Swift's new album comes out. <laughs> so go ahead and subscribe and give us a rating. Now, go on. I'll wait. You can do this all day. And that's all we have for today, so let's wrap up our series, Bloom. Welcome to Shift Online. If you don't know, uh, if you don't know me, my name is Joe. I am the lead pastor here. We are happy to have you with us this Memorial Day weekend, and we hope that your Memorial Day weekend is restful and that you carve out some time uh, to remember those that have fallen in defense of our freedoms. Our prayer is that we are able to create a world uh, where that is no longer needed or has to happen. The other day, um, I had something pop up on my Facebook uh, that kind of took the wind out of my sails. It was a memory of uh, the first time that I met a friend, and um, a good friend, one that I haven't really been in contact with for quite some time. And so seeing that post and reading what I wrote, uh, kind of, it, it hurt. Um this friend and I were, were close for a, a long time. We had a lot in common. We had the same sense of humor, hung out a lot, and then something happened. I, I won't go into detail because it doesn't matter for this talk, um, and I want to protect who I'm talking about. But this thing occurred, um, but this thing that occurred created a rift between us, and over time that rift grew wider and wider. We haven't talked in a long time now. It's a uh, relationship that I wish I knew how to mend. Like, I know that it's broken, but I don't know um, how to fix it. But that, that's kind of life, isn't it? We all have these memories of things that we've done or things that have been done to us, of amazing life events, these life-altering things. Um, and each of us, all of us, carry those memories with us. They shape and they mold us. They'll, those are the things that make us who we are today. Uh, memories, memories honestly are part of our growth, of our, of our trajectory. And the past several weeks, we've been uh, in a series called Bloom, where we've been talking about our growth. And Dr. Hannah Bain uh, started it 
with the parable of the soils and a tree left for dead uh, from her backyard. Then we talked about how love is the soil in which our faith grows. And it's not just facts or, or right beliefs. And last week, we looked back at that soils parable and we saw that not all growing things are good and how we must tend to our fields. Otherwise, they naturally uh, become overgrown and they start choking out that life. Now, have you noticed, have you noticed how a song can instantly take you back? I'm pretty sure that most people are aware of the fact that I love 80s music. My two favorite bands uh, from the 80s era are Tears for Fears and Huey Lewis and the News. Um, I can hear a song and remember exactly where I, w- where I was and what I was doing w- when I first heard it. I can remember listening to Shout by Tears for Fears on my boombox, laying on my bed in my room, and I was reading Mad Magazine. Specifically, I was reading Spy vs. Spy. O- or when I hear the song Stand By Me, uh, I always think back to the weekend that I, I spent with my best friend at his new house. Uh, a few months earlier, uh, he had moved out of our neighborhood, and it absolutely crushed me uh, as like a fourth, fifth grader. Um, we walked along a creek, uh, balancing on a fallen tree. And as we were doing that, we, we sang that song. Uh, yeah, it was a little dramatic, for sure. Uh, but I can still feel the heartache that I experienced then when I hear that song, or, or smells. Um, when my wife, Tori, and I first started dating, she worked at uh, Victoria's Secret, and she wore their body spray, uh, strawberry and champagne. That smell <laughs> drove me crazy. Uh, I have no idea if they still make that smell, make that, um, that perfume, but I can remember smelling it. She stopped wearing it, and I could smell it, either from the store, or maybe she found it, put it back on, and it would instantly take me back to uh, our first date. Like I was transported back in time. First date, uh, first kiss, uh, listening to Garth Brooks and the road trips that we took in college, uh, Le Bourgeois Winery in Rocheport, Missouri. I loved that smell, um, but it was because... Uh, I love the person that that smell was on. Memory has a way of doing that. It, it is a powerful thing that can move us through space and time. And things that long lay dormant in the back of our memories all of a sudden come flooding back with the slightest provocation. And some of those things are wonderful and some are not. But all of those events, it's all of those events that inform, not define, but inform who we are today. And in our day-to-day, sometimes it's hard to track progress, right? I'm guessing that most of us uh, feel like we are where we are and that there hasn't been much movement. But by looking back, uh, by remembering, we see just how far we've actually traveled. I think about that perfume uh, my wife, then girlfriend, wore. And I remember how I felt about her, how intense those feelings were. And then I look at today, and I see just how much that love has grown and deepened and matured. Now, a few moments ago, I mentioned Facebook memories. I have a love-hate relationship with that stupid thing. First, I love the fact. I'm so thankful that I did not grow up with social media. Second, I still posted some really stupid and cringy things, especially when it came to my evangelical days. Uh, I would post the churchiest, most performative, eye-rolling Christian-y things. I can't begin to imagine what people thought of me when I posted that stuff. Well, you know, actually I can because I think those things when I see people post them now. Um, And I did those things, I posted those things because I thought I had to as a pastor. I was playing a role. And it was all fake. I remember making posts about how awesome some elders meetings were. Listen to me, zero elders meetings are awesome, okay? But I posted them because I had to do that, or or at least I thought so. Uh, and, and, And I look back now and I see how far 
I've come out of that kind of thinking, out of that performative uh, part of evangelicalism. And that friend that I mentioned at the very beginning, I have several of those situations in my life. And honestly, it breaks my heart. Just talking about it, I can feel the weight in my chest. Why do I have several of those, you may ask? Well, in the gospel attributed to Mark, uh, some Pharisees come to Jesus and they're asking him, why aren't your disciples fasting like we do? And Jesus gives them the response, well, you don't fast when you're celebrating with the groom, right? It's a celebration, but when the groom is gone, then they can fast. And then he says something that's really curious. It's found in Mark chapter 2, 21 and 22. He says, besides, who would patch old clothing with new cloth? For the new patch would shrink and rip, rip away from the old cloth, leaving an even bigger tear before. And no one puts new wine into old wineskins, for the wine would burst the wineskins, and the wine and the skins would both be lost. New wine calls for new wineskins. And Jesus shows up on the scene, starts doing a new thing, and this new thing cannot be contained in the old system. This new wine would bust the old wineskins. Even if you try to repair or reinforce uh, the cloth or the white skin, it would burst open, losing everything. And Jesus is telling them that their way, their system that they've created, their man-made uh, rules is no longer sufficient for what Jesus is doing. Now, when uh, Tori and I began leading Shift, um, we spent a lot of time thinking and talking about what we wanted this to be, what we wanted to do. Because for us, this is it. Uh, this is our final straw. If this didn't or doesn't make it, we're done. So we made a list of all of the things that we hated about the modern church and made a list of all of the things that we wanted as staff. And we eliminated the things that we hated and we added the things that we wanted. And that's the reason that you're watching this online instead of in. Uh, because we wanted all of the... Uh, we wanted all of our volunteers and staff and everybody on these major holiday weekends to be able to go do the things that we've always wanted to do and have zero guilt about missing out on one Sunday. But it wasn't, it wasn't any of those kind of things, right? Just little stuff that we tweaked on a on program level that caused those rifts, that caused those situations, that caused, honestly, the old wineskins to burst. It was the fact that Tori and I felt pulled by God, and we did feel pulled by God, to create a church that not only welcomed LGBTQ plus people, but a church that was for them, like it would be for anyone else. And the first person that was on our board of, the, of our, our board of directors was a close friend, is a close friend who is a, a gay Christian. We wanted to make sure. Uh, that people knew that there would be no ceiling of belonging on any level at shift. And we didn't want it to be just lip service. So we there had to be real change from the very top, from the very beginning. Eventually, we began to understand and see that our theological move was going to require new wineskins. Um, the old wineskins had begun to leak, and soon wine would be pouring out of them. And it wasn't something that we wanted or, or enjoyed at all. When those uh, memories uh, pop up on my feed, it, phys it phys physically hurts um, because I still love those people and I, I miss them deeply. But sometimes uh, following Jesus' path requires us to let go of things that no longer serve us, even if that means um, relationships. And as much as that hurts, and it does hurt, looking back, remembering those things is a reminder of how much we've grown, of how far we have come. If we stayed where we were, we wouldn't get to be a part of all of the good things uh, we get to be a part of right now. We wouldn't have these beautiful relationships and friendships that we've been blessed with. And we wouldn't be able to do the work against hatred and bigotry the way that we do now. And not to be dismissive, but our lives are much richer now. Not because of anyone that's missing, but because of those that are here in our lives. 
The new wineskins are full of meaningful relationships, of new growth, full of good trouble. And uh, while the, the memories of old wineskins and relationships no longer here haunt us, um, I can honestly say that we wouldn't trade any of it for where we are today. All of our paths, all of our decisions, all of the events in, of, of our lives have brought us to this point right here, right now. Many of those past things uh, were good and pure and holy, and many weren't. And the wisdom that we must seek today is what wineskins, uh, which wineskins are we going to allow uh, for meaningful growth and which wineskins will hinder that growth? Memories, remembering, has a way of helping us see where we've already chosen those good wineskins and seeing just how much we've grown. And so wherever you are, wherever you're watching this from, I'm going to ask some reflection questions to help guide us through this. So what I want you to do is I want you to take a moment uh, to think back about how far you've come, all right? And while you're doing that, hear me when I say these next few things. Do not reduce the work that you've already done. Don't reduce what you've done, all right? Don't dismiss it. Don't don't go about wishing that you would have done more or started earlier. We were where we were when we were there, right? We did what we did while we were there because we were handed a filter. And now we realize that that filter no longer serves us. And so we're setting it aside and we're doing better work. So don't dismiss what you've done. Don't re reduce the work from your past. So question number one, thinking through what Jesus said about wineskins, what things no longer serve you and need to be let go? How will letting go of your old wineskins allow for even more growth in your life? And how can you let your memories reveal how much you've already grown and empower you to keep growing? And we're going to post these later so that you have time to kind of go back and reflect on them. But I would encourage you during this long holiday weekend to spend some time remembering the things of your past, those things that inform who you are today, the things that are good, the things that are not so good, and allow that memory to show you just how far you've actually come and to empower you to keep growing. Let's pray. God of new wine, thank you for your wine. Thank you for growth at new seasons of life and memories of days past. Thank you for working in the good and bad. Thank you for squeezing every ounce of good from all of those things. I pray that you bring to mind the old wine skins that are still holding back our growth and give us the strength to lovingly let go of those things. Give us the courage to embrace the new wine skins, even when people around don't understand. And thank you for the sweetness of your new wine and the holy goodness it brings to our lives. May we be new wineskins filled with this new wine for everyone around us. And most of all, we thank you for the love and the grace that you surround us with. We pray these in you, all these things in your name. Amen.